So this week, my words are going to be challenge accepted. Someone challenged me to do a video a day for this whole week. So seven videos coming your way this week. And the first is going to be about being a pregnant funeral director. Um, I've had some women ask me, you know, what was my experience as a female funeral director while I was pregnant? What did I do? What did I not do in terms of the workload? So here are some answers for you. So my first pregnancy, I was doing freelance funeral directing, so I was sometimes the only person on site at the funeral home. And so I was doing the office, I was doing the removals, and um, doing the arrangements and everything. But then I was also the on-site funeral director for a local funeral home. I was very lucky that all the people I covered for knew I was pregnant right from the beginning and knew that I didn't want to embalm and that was my choice and they were fully supportive they let me call in a trade embalmer and we made it work and then for removals I took additional staff if I needed to and so I was basically the voice and the director and, and did kind of all the talking and then I had my um, my muscle with me so it worked out really great and it was all because I had supportive employers and supportive co-workers and supportive people around me that wanted to make sure me and my baby were taken care of along with the family that we were serving. Now, second pregnancy, same thing. Um, I was at one location and luckily I was allowed not to embalm and, and to do kind of my workload as needed. So one thing during both pregnancies, I was super sick. Um, my first pregnancy, I didn't eat a lot for a while and I was trying to figure out how to maneuver the whole morning sickness and I had I was sick during most of the pregnancy but it wasn't like hospitalization level that I know some women get to um, but it was just where I wouldn't feel really great I'd want to be laying down I worried about going into arrangements because I was concerned what if I throw up in the middle of an arrangement or how can I focus on taking care of somebody when I feel like crap and so I, I figured out ways to make it work I took my Unisom I took my you know my what is it B12 or whatever it is you take and tried to curb um, the nausea and, and just do the best I could and, and pressed forward so all you can do is take it day by day and do your best when it comes to that part of it um, eat what you can eat and and kind of move forward my second pregnancy my office um, partner I guess you would say she was way more than a secretary she did everything basically it was her and I as a team kind of making almost everything happen at this one location and so and her and I actually ended up being five weeks apart in our pregnancies which was crazy it was a lot of hormones in one office but it was really an awesome experience as well so that during the second pregnancy was pretty crazy because the families were responding to us they you know it, it gave a little bit of humor actually when we were both to that stage where you couldn't hide the pregnancy at all um, and so people were comment on that and created a little bit of levity with some families when they came in because they'd be like what's in the water and you know making jokes when we didn't have to put forth anything except for our bellies to make the jokes so that also was a, 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 a kind of a a lightning moment I guess at the funeral home with the families um, so when it came to embalming um, there's really no studies there's no concrete evidence whether a pregnant woman should be exposed in the prep room there just isn't because what pregnant woman is going to go through a test to see if it harms her baby or not there's just no practical way to test that um, and so it hasn't been done really that we can find it all. I checked with fluid companies, I checked with everybody, and I couldn't find concrete evidence. So to me, I said, well, if we don't know it's bad, we don't know it's good either. I'm just not doing it. I didn't want to get to the point that if I had a miscarriage or something, that I always wondered if that's what it was from. So for me, I took the safe road and did not embalm at all. I hardly went in the prep room. To, I didn't want exposure to any fluid smells, any anything, especially your, your smell is heightened during pregnancy and so I just didn't want the exposure anyway. Um, that was my choice. I know women who have embalmed during their whole pregnancies, never an issue, had beautiful children, no health issues. Who's to say? 
you know, if it's something they can't study and we don't have concrete proof on, then you have to use your own gut instinct. You know, from the moment you get pregnant, you are a mom. And so you have to take and use your mom gut instinct, and that's what drives all of your decisions. Should you lift that casket? Use your gut instinct. It's not just you you're caring for anymore. It's you and that child. So is it worth lifting and possibly having a rupture, having a, you know, uh, where the placenta removes itself from the wall of your, you know, and stomach and stuff? You don't want to chance any of these things happening by doing something that you probably shouldn't be doing. Even if you're tough, even if you're strong, just let somebody else do it for nine months. Let, you know, somebody else help you for nine months. Just take a back seat to some of these things. Don't let your pride get in your way of you and your child. I did find that there was things, there was times, I think back during my pregnancy, so Catholic incense. This was one thing I remember clearly. I was standing at the front of the Catholic church at the end because you kind of move to the front when the priest is circling the casket waving the incense because it's going to be your time to um, bring the casket out of the church pretty quickly after that and he did the incense and this waft hit me of it and I almost passed out like I stumbled I caught my breath I got really nauseous really cold I could not be around incense when I was pregnant in the church and I knew it and so I would always send somebody else up to the front of the church and I just stayed my my distance because it would make me almost pass out and I don't know what it was about it but I was hypersensitive to it during that time um, you know I was I was once really sick one day and we were at this remote church way out in the boonies and I really did not feel good and there's one little bitty bathroom and I was scared if this bathroom was gonna work and I didn't know I was gonna like poop my pants or if I was gonna throw up or I just felt like crap from the pregnancy and I didn't know what was gonna happen and I felt even worse because I was so nervous that I'm in this little church and there's this one little bathroom and I can't hide what's happening with me because everybody could hear or everybody was gonna know and so it was almost the anxiety of the situation got me worse than actually being sick I remember that one clearly, which is not alone if you're pregnant. I mean, if you're sick at all, that's always going to make you a little more nervous. And then if you're alone at the funeral home, I was at the funeral home alone and started having pains, like bad pains. I didn't know if I was going into labor, and I was not near um, being ready to go into labor. And I was lucky one of my part-time guys came in, and they were family. They were they were my, my dads and my grandpas. And he would not leave. He would not let me alone. He would not let me be there by myself because he knew I wasn't right. And so until I could get in my car and be safe, he didn't leave me alone. And after that moment, those guys watched me like a hawk. And it was nice to have people watching me and concerned about me and loving me during the whole process because you need that when you're in a workplace outside of your home, outside of your immediate family. You need that support. So it's important to have, especially at the funeral home, we're taking in a lot of emotion, we're taking in a lot more things, so take care of yourself. Um, one other thing I was going to say is clothing. So you have to invest in maternity clothing, right? So how much should you get when you're a funeral director? Because it's kind of its own wardrobe on top of other clothing that you wear. So my first pregnancy, I bought one pair of dress slacks from Motherhood Maternity. And I literally wore those pants every single day. And I worked four days a week. Um, and then every other weekend. So sometimes it would be weekends. I would wash them every day if I had to. But I, want, I didn't want to invest in more than one pair. So I invested in one pair of pants. Wore those through my whole first pregnancy. Second pregnancy, I got three pair because I was wearing them a little more often. Um, and so... I, I invested in as minimal as I had to. I went on eBay and bought, you know, dress shirts by the lots. I did buy a couple new ones and, and new dress shirts, but I more invested in, like, shells and then could wear a cardigan over that you didn't need to be maternity. I invested in one dress coat, and I don't even think I bought a maternity one. It was, like, a larger size. Um, I bought it, like, two or four sizes up from what I usually wear. And it worked fine. I never needed to button it. I felt that the pregnancy gave you a little leeway not to be as buttoned up and restricted as you usually would because it would kind of look funny if you buttoned it on top of this bump anyway. 
Um, so I invested in just some staple items and I just kept wearing them over and over and over and made it work. You don't need to go and get this huge new outfit and a huge new dress, um, dress suit and everything, but get your staple items and just rotate. And you're probably going to get in, need a new pair of shoes because sometimes your feet get bigger. I know mine grew and I had to get bigger shoes. And I think my feet have finally shrunk down three years later now after my second pregnancy. So those are my pregnancy tips from when I was pregnant as a funeral director and hopefully they help. I'd love to hear what you guys went through and if you embalmed or, or things that you found you couldn't do or could do um, when you were pregnant as well. So post them below and if you like what you hear, of course, don't miss any future videos. Subscribe. And I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye. So after I shoot videos sometimes, I get more ideas about what else I need to talk about. And this was the case with the pregnancy video. So wanted to do just a few follow-up items as well in addition to the previous. Um, one thing I thought about was the situations you're going to encounter that you maybe have to all of a sudden turn over to another staff member. So what if you go into labor or your water breaks or, or something and so towards the end of pregnancy, my first pregnancy I worked up to nine days past my due date. The tenth day I went into labor. Um, so I was huge and ready to pop for a long time but my body wasn't ready to go. Um, and so that I think it was like seven days past due it was like 103 outside and I know this all seems exaggeratory and it's not and we're at the cemetery for a Native American service which is a long service at the cemetery there's drumming and everyone walks by the casket again and people sing and so it's a long thing and it was hot um, I felt like I was gonna pass out I had to go sit in the hearse the vault guys were all watching and making sure I was okay and my staff was and you know I just talk with my staff beforehand hey if anything goes hinky you need to step in for me and so we had a plan for at least that last month even when we went on services and when we were doing things that if something happened to me who was jumping in who was taking over so make a plan just in case just in case you go into labor just in case your water breaks just in case something happens um, when you're pregnant and you maybe are serving a family who have a baby loss definitely a sensitive huge topic to talk about here um, I had that case where I was visibly pregnant had a woman lose her baby at the same gestation that I was actually and I pulled myself off and said this is really not nice for me to meet with this family. For them to have lost a baby and sit with me who has a healthy baby inside, I felt like it was hurtful and it just wasn't right. And it was hard to get everybody to understand that since they weren't in the same mind frame. But I would have been really hurt and saddened by the situation if I was sitting there having lost a baby sitting with someone who was also pregnant. I know people who have been pregnant and made arrangements in that same situation and it worked out okay. I just, I felt uncomfortable and it would have come across in the arrangement process, but um, it definitely created a, an odd situation trying to convince people that that was not, not the best interest for me or for the other person. Um, so definitely be sensitive to the families you're meeting with and kind of the setup. And if you are a male funeral director, being sensitive to a female coworker who might be having to deal with, you know, a family that's having that kind of loss as well. One last thing that really impacted my work, I feel like, um, I had postpartum depression after one of my pregnancies. Um, I don't like to not be in control and it took a little while for me to acknowledge that something was going on with me that I wasn't controlling kind of my actions and my attitudes and you know by the time I went back to work after my maternity leave um, I, I had things seemingly under control it felt like but it was hard for me in terms of emotions I was either one side or another so little things were huge to me during that time period um, you know little situations that were maybe hiccups you would have thought the casket fell over and and so forth and so I feel like to the family maybe I presented myself calmly but behind the scenes I looked like probably a mess to 
you know, the people I worked with. Luckily, they knew me and they knew me in a normal stage. And so hopefully it came across, you know, I they, they knew who I was on a normal level. And um, so they kind of rolled with it with me. Um, but I think it's it's a huge learning curve when you have somebody that's going through that and maybe if you don't know that that's what they're going through and maybe they're seemingly different, um, there's definitely a postpartum period where you're not yourself, your hormones are not normal, and everybody can play it off, oh, it's just hormones, but you can't control how you act with hormones a lot. They control you, and even if you want to say one thing, something else may fly out because you really can't control what's happening so there's definitely a, a mental capacity that goes along with the hormone control and um, I never understood and believed it until going through that postpartum phase so definitely a hard thing um, and during that postpartum you know you're pumping at work and you're having to factor that in so you know I've I've was pumping at a Catholic Church once and had uh, priest walk in and was like oh my goodness and I, you know you didn't see anything because I was kind of shielded but you kind of you carry your pump and you're sitting out in cars or you're you know in bathrooms or you're wherever you are that you need to be to take care of what you got to do uh, so definitely that is another factor a huge factor when it comes to being pregnant going back to work anywhere but within a funeral home you know you make it you know, you may have little oddities. You work with a huge male staff usually, and and so just be honest and tell them what you need and what your situation is, and people will understand. So, as I said before, hope you guys like the video, um, and subscribe if you're not. So, talk to you guys later. Bye.